You know, every good thing takes work. Anything that's worth anything takes effort. And it was the same with American government. It took us four months to put together that Constitution. And when it went out before the people, that's when the argument really began. And America, as always, was divided almost straight down the middle. Now the argument would go on for almost a year. And here's pretty much how it fell out. On the one side, there were the men that we call the Federalists. They were guys that were for ratification of the Constitution as is. They wanted to form that strong central government. Now, these were men like Alexander Hamilton. He was Washington's right-hand man during the Revolutionary War, and most people of the day looked at him as Washington's mouthpiece politically. John Jay, who was a foreign minister during the Revolution, but was a great legal mind. And James Madison, the author of the Constitution himself. Now, these men wrote a series of essays, 85 in all, that today we call the Federalist Papers. They were the argument for why the Constitution should be ratified. They were an explanation of what each article in the Constitution meant and how it should be interpreted. And it's great reading even today. Now, on the other side were the Anti-Federalists. And that name might not be quite correct. To be sure, there were some of these guys that were absolutely opposed to ratification of the Constitution. They felt, we just fought a war to get away from a strong central government. Why on earth would you want to go back that direction? Now, these are guys like Patrick Henry, Mr. Liberty or Death himself. George Mason, the author of the Virginia Bill of Rights, and Thomas Jefferson, writing all the way from France. Now, correctly put, these guys' arguments really were the state's rights point of view, the right of the individual, the small government idea. And they wrote papers, too, countering the arguments of the Federalists. We call them the Anti-Federalist Papers. The argument would rage, go back and forth, and both sides had excellent points. But really, the decision would hinge on two events. Now, the first thing that happened is George Washington kind of, sort of, picked a side. You got to remember, Mr. Washington hated factionalism. He wasn't for any side or any party. But his experience during the war, dealing with the several governors of the states, all acting like they were the president of their own nation, and the fact that Virginia and Maryland couldn't work together to dig a canal, had taught him that, yeah, creating a stronger central government is probably the best idea. So he sort of sided with the Federalists, and a lot of people threw in with Washington. But the nature of the discussion really changed. When Thomas Jefferson wrote from Paris, France, I don't know that I could ratify such a constitution as this without including a Bill of Rights to protect the citizen. Everybody in the anti-federalist camp immediately jumped on that train. And many people in the federalist camp thought the idea had merit as well. In fact, James Madison, the author of the Constitution, he pledged himself to write a Bill of Rights and include it with the Constitution. By 1789, every state had ratified the Constitution, and George Washington would be the first man elected president under the new Constitution of the United States of America. We'll see you next time when we talk about the legal precedents of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. For more information, go to freedomfactor.org.